Next up at 4 o'clock today, Michigan senior U.S. Senator will not seek re-election in 2024. Democrat Debbie Stabenow made that announcement earlier today. Political reporter Rick Albin spoke with the senator shortly after that news broke, and he joins us now. Rick? It's a big announcement. Since 1974, Senator Stabenow has been involved in Michigan politics at the county, state, and federal level. She served in the Michigan House and Senate, the U.S. House, even ran in a primary for governor and ended up as the lieutenant governor candidate in 1994. Now, after what will have been 50 years of public service, when she leaves office in two years, Stabenow told me it is time to pass along the responsibility to a new generation. Rick, first of all, um, it has been the honor of my life and, and will continue to be for the next two years uh, uh, until the end of my term and uh, to serve in so many different ways in Michigan. I'm born and raised here. Michigan is in, in my genes. And uh, uh, so th certainly this was a, a decision I had to think long and hard about. But for me, it's uh, family considerations, a 96-year-old mom who I love dearly, who uh, is uh, really I want to be spending more time with uh, rather than the rigors of a campaign. But also, it's a very important time for me to pass the torch. We have wonderful leaders. We have a new generation. I came in as a new generation, uh, first running when I was 24 years old for county commission. And it's always been important to me to support other leaders, to open doors, and to know when it's time to pass the torch to them. And so I feel this is the right time. So what does that mean going forward? Outside of the obvious rare opportunity it presents for any number of ambitious political types to take a shot at an open U.S. Senate seat, it deals another blow to Michigan's seniority in Washington. That's taken some real serious hits in the past few years. You think since 19, check that, 2015, with the retirement of John Dingell, Carl Levin, Fred Upton, and now Senator Debbie Stabenow retiring in two years, the state will have lost more than 150 years of seniority. And that means lost committee chairmanship, mm -hmm. lost positioning there. So it, it's another big change in Michigan politics to lose somebody who's been around in Washington as long as Senator Stabenow has. Yeah, big and changes. Rick, yeah, it's day one. It's very early. Right. But who are we looking at for maybe vying for this position? Every politician worth their weight right now is saying, oh, I'm just interested in doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. now because nobody wants to get out ahead of this. And this is a time for people, and they've been doing this on, on social media with emails and releases all day, uh, thanking Senator Stabenow for her service, talking about what a great job she did. And everybody's kind of saying, at this point, they're just talking about her service. But what we know is that one time in the 27 years that I've been covering politics in Michigan, there's been an open Senate seat. Every other time you have to run against an incumbent. Mm -hmm. That means anybody who has any ambition that ever wants to do this, even if it's not the right time for them, if the timing is not great, they're going to at least consider a run. That could be anybody. And please, when I start mentioning names, understand I'm speculating. I haven't talked to any of these people. Any number of them will say they're not running. But they're going to have to think about it. For example, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson might be a good fit for her. What about Secretary Buttigieg? He is now a, a Michigan resident, and he obviously has political aspiration. And while you're talking about cabinet secretaries, what about Jennifer Granholm? Mm -hmm. She's not a resident here anymore, but that can be rectified in the past or in the next two years. Any number of members of Congress, including maybe Andy Levin, who is no longer a member of Congress, but the Levin name, um, as Carl Levin's nephew, would go a long way in running for Senate, I think. Um, John James, who is, or, as a Republican, has run twice uh, for the U.S. Senate. Um, I've got like three or four yeah. more pages yeah, we can go through. a lot of interest, uh, I would and, think. And don't rule out state senators. Uh, uh, Mallory McMorrow, a Democrat, yeah. uh, comes to mind. Curtis Hertel Jr., no longer a senator, but the Hertel name, his dad was Speaker of the House. Anybody in the state house, anybody in the state senate, you name it, this is going to be a free for all unless somebody gets in and bigfoots it and gets everybody else to step away. I can think of a couple names, but I won't mention them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, we'll continue to follow this. It'll be see. You bet. Interesting to see how it'll all unfold. Oh, absolutely. Because this is unusual. You yeah. Bet. All right, Rick. Thanks. You bet.